You probably have heard about Cursor by now. It's the AI code editor that everybody is talking about. And I also finally got a chance to play with it. And I think it is pretty impressive. So in this video, I'm going to show you how you can use this in your own projects if you decide to use it as a co-pilot and some of the things that you need to be aware in terms of capabilities and limitations. Here is what we are going to be building in this video. I'll walk you through a step-by-step -step process. Also, I documented all the issues that I ran into and documented all my learnings. To get started, you need to download Cursor and I'll highly recommend to create an account even if you decide not to pay for it. You will get 500 fast requests even on your free account for a month. More on this later in the video. Once you open Cursor, here's the interface that you will see. It's essentially VS Code with some added features. So I'm going to open a folder that I already created called Cursor Tutorial. And now you can see this is basically VS Code. We don't have any uh, files in this uh, folder. So I'm going to use Cursor to create my project files. And for project, we will be using the latest uh, text to image model called Flux that is available on Replicate. Now Cursor uses Claude 3.5 Sonnet. So it has no idea about this new model. So I'm going to show you a way in which you can introduce documentations to Cursor and then Cursor will be able to use that in your own projects. So first you want to go to settings and here you want to make sure that the Claude 3.5 Sonnet is enabled in, in the models. It will also use some of the other models or you can introduce your own models if you have API access. By default, it is using the Cloud 3.5 Sonnet, but you can also enable these other models as well. Next, you want to click on features and you want to make sure to enable the cursor tab feature. Also, you want to enable composer. This is the feature which sets it apart from other AI code editor or code generators. There are some beta features as well. Uh, in this video, we're going to just um, mainly focus on the composer, but I'm going to create a very detailed video about different features that are available in Cursor. You can use the AI features within Cursor in different ways. One of them is to enable the chat window. So click on toggle AI pan, and now you have a chat window very similar to uh, Claude or ChatGPT with some added features. I'll cover this in another video. In this video, the focus is going to be on a Cursor Composer. And in order to enable it, just press Command I on Mac OS. So here, you're going to be presented with a small window where you can interact with Cursor through simple text. Now it has a very unique feature. If you type at, you're going to be shown this pop-up window now, if you click on files, basically, if there are any files in the project, you can select those and start using those right away in your project. Or you can also select specific folder, code snippet, or the one that we're going to be uh, using in this video is web links. So you just select web and then you provide a link. Then cursor will be able to go parse uh, text or information from that link and use it when it's generating code for you, which is extremely powerful, especially if you're working with a new API or a new package that the model hasn't seen in its training data. It also has access to a number of different documentations. So for example, here are the official S3 documentations, or if I start typing hugging face, so you can see that it has access to official hugging face documentations as well. So you can directly access this documentation within cursor. For this example project, we're going to be using the prompt, use the instructions in the web. So we am providing a link to the documentation of Flux. And I specifically wanted to use the Python documentation to set up a photo generator from input text prompts. Create a Python UI using Streamlit that allows the user to input a text prompt. The prompt is sent to replicate. So use the above uh, documentation. Flux is used to generate an image and display it back to the user. Also add two buttons below the image, the generated image, one for regenerating the image and the second for downloading the image. Now you want to be as detailed as, as possible in your prompts. 
because keep in mind you only have 500 fast prompts for a month which you will quickly burn through and these prompts are the prompts that you're sending not actually based on the number of tokens that are being used so i'm going to send this command and let's see what composer does so it started looking for information on the web it's also looking at the replicate documentation so this is pretty good now it says i'll create a streamlit app that uses flux a model from replicate to generate images and here you can see that it generated a file called app.py with a whole bunch of python code now at the top you will see this accept button or here in the composer you can also see this accept all button so if you're happy with the code that it has generated you can just click on accept all and it will save the file for you so it's asking us to install the packages that we'll need then we need to also set the replicate api token as an environment variable and it's telling us all the instructions that we will need in order to run this app so i'm going to next ask it to create a dot env file for storing the secrets related to the project and update the app.py to use environment variables and also create a conda virtual environment okay so we have our environment variable so we just need to copy our replicate api key you can also see that it has updated the code for us so now it's using the dot env so this is good i'm happy with the uh, changes it has made so i'm going to just accept everything we also need to create a requirements from text file so i'm going to do that myself now it did use specific versions but i'm going to just remove those i don't want to run into any issues with the versions that it has selected so we'll just uh, save this and it also gave us all the um, commands that we will need to create our virtual environment. Okay, so I'm going to open my virtual environment and just paste the first command, which will create the virtual environment for us. Next, we will uh, paste the second command, which will activate the virtual environment for us. And then if I look here, it's just telling me how do I install the packages. So for that, we will just use pip install dash r, pip install dash r requirements dot text this should install all the packages that we will need now i need to copy the replicate api token so here's the replicate api token that i will need so i'm going to copy this paste it here under uh, inside quotes now i think we should be good to go so i'm going to just run my streamlit app streamlit run and then app.py okay so here's the app that is running all right, so my prompt is going to be create an image of a llama wearing sunglasses standing in the snow. Let's see if it can generate this image for us. Now, we ran into some issues. Okay, so it's complaining about a version. Uh, I'm going to just say I ran into this issue and let's see what it does. All right, so uh, it updated our app.py file. So if you go here, here are the, here are the updates. And you can also go back to that specific location in which it updated it. So I think it was complaining about this specific version of the model. I'm going to accept it and we'll just rerun the app. All right, so uh, my prompt again is going to be very simple. Ask it to generate the image for us and it ran into the same issue again. Okay, the main issue is that it's adding this latest uh, keyword in front of the model. But in actual documentation, there is there is nothing in front of it. So I'm going to just copy this and tell cursor. All right, so rather than directly telling it, I'm going to say, it seems like the model name is wrong. Can you look at, and then we're going to again point it to the web, all right, to make sure the model name is correct, right? Now, as you can see, cursor is pretty great, but it's not perfect. And this is one of the uh, things I really want to point out that for demos these tools are absolutely amazing however in real world or real life scenarios you are going to run into those issues and that is why it's very important that you actually understand what cursor is doing for you so again it didn't really fix the issue so i'm gonna just do it manually so i'm going to reject all and we'll delete this part store the file again and let's run it again Okay, our prompt again is going to be create an image of a llama wearing sunglasses. So we can click on this and it seems like it's communicating. So yeah, we do have an image of a llama. 
and there are two buttons when one is regenerate the other one is download so first see if the download button works so here's the file uh, that is downloaded and let's see if I click on regenerate it sends the same command again or the same prompt so it regenerated an image now the um, app works but let's see if we can make some changes to it okay so I, I'm asking it can you recreate this app using HTML CSS and and, uh, and make it a much better looking so this uh, these are pretty vague instructions but let's see what it comes up with okay so it's creating an index.html file so this is the HTML file and you can see what exactly is going to go in there so we're going to wait for this and here it created an HTML file I think everything is contained in the, within this single file so I'm going to just accept everything now we just need to open this file in a web browser okay so here's the HTML version so let's use this prompt which is a relatively complex prompt all right now we're running into this issue it says page says failed to generate images please try again so let me try again all right okay so we need to inspect what exactly is happening and for that I'm going to click on inspect then we're going to go to the console and you can see that there are a whole bunch of errors that are happening and I think the reason is it has issues with cross-platform so I'm going to come back again to composer and just paste in that error and let's see uh, what solution it comes up with okay so now it's uh, implemented a server side code for us again I'm going to remove this so we don't run into the model related issues again accept that and we also need to accept changes to our HTML file so I'm going to accept those as well we also need to install flask because now the server is running using flask so I'm going to paste this in here okay now instead of running the HTML file it's asking us to run the Python server.py file so I'm going to paste this here let's run this and let's open this link okay so we ran into issues again because it's not able to do, find that page so I'm going to just uh, click control I again we'll provide this it, it simply has to update our uh, server.py file so I'm going to copy this again okay so let's see what update it makes now as you can see that um, I'm running into issues just copying the errors in here way similar to what I would do with Claude but the good thing here is that it can modify the files directly and it can also read multiple files Claude I think limits it to five files but it can look at the whole code base and in later in the later videos I'll show you some other features which enables it to chat with your documents as well and chat with your code as well those are other features that we are going to explore in another video so let's accept all the changes so we are making progress okay let's click on generate okay we ran into yet another issue so let's post that error here this wasn't what I was expecting when I was uh, planning on creating this video but I actually want to show you the actual process of what can happen okay this, so this, this one was not an error actually let me restart the whole file and then we'll see uh, what error we run into okay I had to go back and forth a couple of times with cursor but I think we finally have a solution all right so here's the new app after those changes okay so we're going to use this prompt let's see what flux comes up with oh this is pretty nice I can download it the same way as before you know the file that it downloaded is in dot uh, web p which I hate because you can't really work with these uh, file types and if you click on regenerate let's see if we can regenerate the image yeah so this works pretty cool okay so this was a cool a little project but a few things uh, when your cursor that you need to keep in mind okay the first one is going to be these 500 fast generations so when we started this video I think I was about 18 requests in so I used around 14 more requests and now if you are working on any complicated project these can really add up and potentially you will quickly run out of these fast requests after that it's going to start using Gemini 4o mini or cursor small I'm not sure how good the output of those are going to be though another thing this is a very powerful feature but you still need to know how to program if you want to use it effectively you can easily create smaller projects without any programming knowledge for sure and you probably have seen a lot of demos out there however if you run into issues it's still using an LLM and it will hallucinate 
So you need to know how to solve some of the problems or at least point it in the right direction. A related thing to keep in mind is the text stack that you want to use. So you need to be very ex explicit in what text stack to use and you need to be actually familiar with that text stack for complicated projects. Okay, so some final thoughts. It's an extremely powerful tool which you definitely want to keep in your tool set. And the good thing is this is the worst it ever will be. But it's not an AI programmer or a software engineer replacement yet. I hope you found this video useful. Thanks for watching and as always, see you in the next one.